lot of questions we have, especially in the springtime, with people with irrigation systems are higher than normal water bills. A lot of this is attributed to the fact that we have a lot of growth in the area where new customers who have not been used to having irrigation systems, a lot of the things that, that we try to help them with is an understanding of how that system operates. One piece of advice to customers with an irrigation system would be just learn your system, uh, get the basics down. The sprinkler systems should be maintained, especially if they've been winterized. And some of the things uh, that you need to look for in that is leakage here if it doesn't pop up properly. Uh, if it does pop up properly to make sure that it's turned the right direction so that the, the grass and uh, landscape gets uh, watered properly. Um, also the connection between well, this will be underground but it also can at that elbow it's plastic so I have seen it leak there the pipe in between I've seen it leak there and also uh, weather if it is raining then your system should be shut off what we have here is a rain free sensor and this is the basic uh, installation for it is near the gutter because obviously it's going to catch the water uh, but it's far enough away from the roof and it's not shielded by anything else so you want to get the optimal just like a rain gauge amount of water in there so it shuts off. My name's Bill Thompson. I'm the general manager of White House Utility District, and we are a water and sewer provider across three counties. One of our biggest challenges is water loss, and it's traditionally a big problem for all water systems, and it's becoming a bigger problem with aging infrastructure. We've got several areas of our staff that need to respond during a water main break. We've got engineering folks, we've got operations folks, we've got customer service folks that all need to be able to respond and know what is going on with the other groups in real time. Every employee at White House has access to GIS and uses a map. What we've been able to do with ArcGIS is actually streamline a lot of our work processes so that we're not duplicating and triplicating information. With the implementation of ArcGIS Online and the executive dashboards, I can see what's happening almost in real time. So I can see the amount of work, how it's distributed, and where the people are. I can also see how they're accomplishing the work. So I can make recommendations back to the managers as to things they can do to improve productivity, things they can do to redistribute work. Using the ArcGIS platform, the field staff can create an outage polygon to let customer service and our customers know exactly what areas are out of water and then also let them know when they could potentially be back on. Because of the investment in GIS, we've seen a great return. Because it's easily accessible, we are able to redirect work to other areas such as leak detection to help eliminate the amount of water that's being needlessly put on the ground, saving hundreds of thousands of dollars each year. ArcGIS has helped us with our capital improvement projects. One of the things we've been able to do is integrate GIS with metering equipment and project where we're having losses. That allows us to make better capital improvement decisions that are not a guess. A good case in point, we were able to postpone a bond issue because of ArcGIS. Effectively, it saved our customers about $32 million. White House Utility District has a truly GIS-centric vision now and for the future. We're excited to start using ArcGIS Pro for 3D hydraulic grade analysis to be able to educate customers and contractors about some of the topographic problems that they may be having with water pressure. Most of our customers, when we talk to them about pressure, if we can represent something in three dimensions, we think we'll be able to convey the points to them better 
and uh, they'll appreciate uh, that visualization. GIS is our cornerstone and it's the only place where we can get all of our information that we need on a daily, monthly, and yearly basis. We're going to show you today how to do a leak check uh, utilizing some typical meters that you see at your house. You want to make sure all the water inside the house is off. And you'll go out to your meter box and uh, we're going to take a look at the meter to determine if we've actually got water flowing through the water pipes. So this would be a traditional style meter, what we call a mechanical style meter. If you don't have any type of leak, you shouldn't see any movement on the meter at all. There might be some, uh, some customers that have um, the solid state meter. Uh, this particular meter reads down to hundredths of gallons, so you'll see a decimal point after the four there. It also has a uh, flow indicator on it, um, so if you don't have any flow going through the meter, you're either going to have this ERR message or uh, zero. This third meter, um, it's another uh, solid state meter. It does not have a flow indicator. A little bit different um, leak check on this one. We've kind of shown you what it would look like if you didn't have any leak. Um, you know, you'd come out, your meter should be stationary. Now, if you were to have everything turned off in your house um, and you had a leak on the service line or maybe um, a leak on some interior plumbing, um, we're going to show you what that would look like. On your mechanical style meter, we've got this little pinwheel, what we call um, a low flow indicator or leak indicator. This is a great indicator that there's something going on, water's flowing through the meter, um, you possibly have some type of leak. On this type of meter, um, you can see the uh, flow rate here, press this little uh, indicator here, it'll toggle back between the uh, flow rate and our reading. And you can see here it's a flow rate of 0.44 gallons per minute. If you didn't have anything running in your house, you should see a zero there. Right now we've got half a gallon of flow, which indicates you know, there's some kind of leak uh, on the system. And then on this meter, uh, like we were saying earlier, it doesn't have a uh, flow indicator, but you can see where the um, hundredths of a gallon um, is, is creeping up slowly as the water's going through. If you had something smaller, you might not, it might not be quite as visible as it is now. Um, so on this one, it's, it's really important to uh, write down that reading, uh, wait an hour, and then come back and check that reading. Um, and you're gonna be able to see if you had water going through the meter, it's gonna register. So with any of these meters, um, whether it's got the, uh, you know, the little dial leak indicator or, or not, it's always a good idea to write that reading down, wait for at least an hour, um, and then come back. If you've got something, a very small, minor leak that's going through that meter, five, 10 minutes, you might not notice that. Uh, whereas if you give it at least a good hour, um, you're gonna see that leak on the meter. You're gonna see some kind of change. If you have any questions, any concerns, you know, always feel free to, to call our main office. Um, we can help you out, uh, answer any questions you might have. If you need somebody to help, you know, help run you through doing a leak check, um, you know, we're more than happy to, to help you with that. One of the most common places that we see household leaks are right here in the bathroom, and most often it's this little guy. One way to determine, if you look into the bowl, you'll see a slight trickle around the bowl down into the bottom of the bowl. Another is the water level in the tank. The water level should be about an inch below the fill tube, as you see right here. You see at this point, the water is at the point to spill over into the tube. When that spills over, it goes down into the bowl and out into the system. If everything else looks okay, you can use one of these little dye tablets or some household food coloring, and you just drop it into the water in the tank. If you have a leak, the color of whatever tablet you have will wind up finding its way into the bowl. So here, the bowl, the water is clear and that tells us we don't have a leak. If you were to have a leak, you'd notice that the water turns the color in the bowl as it is in the tank with the dye tablets. And that's it, it's that easy. We recommend that you do this once or maybe twice a year or if you have higher than normal usage. That way, if you have a leak, you can find it and fix it sooner.